Hi, this is John Hilbrands. I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of a good neighbor fence and then also how to install one, including how to build a gate. So let's get started. So its main advantage is that it's the same on both sides, both your side and your neighbor's side. And then also its other advantage is the look of it. Um, a good neighbor fence is also called a shadow box fence and you can see why it creates some interesting shadows and textures as they're offset uh, uh, on the neighbor side and then your side. Another advantage is the construction of them. Because our posts are now exposed, we can put a 2x4 across the top so our heights can hit there instead of uh, against a, a string. We can hit the 2x4, um, just screw them in on either post and that'll set your height. And then of course your rails are held in these brackets and they're also going to be the narrow side on the top um, so that they won't sag as they would if they were reversed. Um, these 2x4s are centered. Um, the disadvantage is that you can kind of peek through the, the rails if you're close. If you get further back, it tends to disappear. Um, these are set at 2 and 3 sixteenths apart and that's what most people do. In fact, most people use their level for their spacer and let me just show you that that is that width so um, that brings us right into the construction and let me start by showing you how uh, we, we do this so first off we're going to uh, set our posts in our concrete and we're going to make sure they're square and they're in line with the other posts. And then the height is going to be the same height as our, our fence uh, our fence sheets, our individual fence boards. Um, so once we get these trimmed off, and to get the height, what I do is I put a fence board against the uh, 4x4, uh, make sure that I'm not too much into the hole so maybe I'll raise it just a fraction if my hole is a little deep but then I'll put a string on the third post this one's already cut so when you lower it when you lower the string to touch the top of the uh, 4x4 it'll just barely touch that number two post that's already trimmed and that will double check that my height is good so once I'm pretty satisfied if they're a little off I might split the difference um, and then that sets my post height. Um, to get your rails in, you'll use the Simpson strong type brackets and we're using the screws, the same screws that we set our fence boards in um, and I'll show you those in a minute. These are Simpson strong tie fence brackets. They're actually made for this purpose, um, not to be confused with maybe rafter ones or something like that. Uh, but these are only 55 cents each so you'll see them uh, Home Depot has them and they have about a thousand of them in stock. So to do this I would measure down 12 inches and get my first one in and to make them centered and I know you think you can eyeball it but it's amazing how you really can't. I cut a little piece that'll space it from either side and that sets my spacing. So just make a mark at 12, hold this against the side of the 4x4 and screw them in. The next one is set at 60 inches from the top. Don't try measuring from the bottom up, but go down and uh, at 60. And I do the second board, the second uh, uh, Simpson Strong Tie uh, fence rail holder. <laughs> and we got two on either side. And then we set our, let me get out of the way here. We set our two by fours in here. These are all pressure treated. So our two by fours are pressure treated and my posts are pressure treated. Now you can see that I have this already set up for installing some more uh, 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 fence boards. And you can see how that'll work. Basically, uh, let's go to holding a spacer. Now this is my spacer that I just mentioned. And basically you just take your level put one screw in a board, put the board against a 4x4, the whole board, use your spacer, 
and uh, just do one screw in each one and work your way across the top and because he's a wiggle then do the same thing at the bottom and once they're all in you can add the second screw on both up and down all right so now you have your rails and one side of your fence down so what about the offset you can see that they're deliberately centered on the op on the um, opening to do that what you do is you start with a partial board and how do you get the partial board you just take your spacer and put it up against a 2x4 and then measure until it's exactly centered so we have the same amount on both sides if you keep going back and forth you're eventually for me you'll get very close to an inch and three quarters um, I actually never measured it I just made a mark once I was happy with it and that mark is what I set my table saw for so we start with that board and then we use our spacer again on the other side and that pretty much makes it so that one board will do uh, three uh, three different pieces um, uh, three starter three starter strips um, and that pretty much gets you even you can see that here I have to make a, a piece that's probably about an inch and three quarters as well because I have a gap there all right um, when you as you put them up periodically check your V's to see if they're perfectly centered you can see that this one's getting off a little bit actually if I straighten the, my camera you can see it. I think it's pretty even actually uh, check your V's these are dog-eared they're six foot um, five and a half uh, redwood uh, uh, fence uh, boards and uh, the dog ears really help me center them <laughs> Perfect time for a helicopter, huh? <laughs> All right, so let's go over to installing our, our gate itself. So you can see I left off a board just so that you guys can see. And to do this, uh, uh, we have our top piece and our bottom piece are both, um, both have a notch in them. So basically the notch, uh, once you get it figured out, you'll cut off all four of them at the same time but first time we cut this way with our table saw by holding it straight up and then the second time we cut this way with our table saw so the fence would be against here and then uh, we would cut this way so the blade is at this height so once you get them all cut screw them down uh, up and all around <laughs> it's kind of like a nursery room and then uh, after you get it square um, after you get them all attached, kind of get it square. You can use a diagonal measurement to get it square. Set out your uh, your your angled piece because you need an angled uh, two by four to um, to keep it all square. Um, in my case, because I probably could have gone this way with the screw and that way with the screw, but I only had three inch, so I did them at uh, toenails. All right, but it I can really feel it just kind of bite and square up perfectly and that worked out really well so let's go into our screw choice and I have them all here so I mentioned screws a few times um, you can use nails I know a lot of people will say screws are slow but these deck mates uh, you can see that they're curved and they have an aggressive thread and that thread uh, uh, just goes so fast uh, um, with the screw gun and they also have a um, a star tip um, they come with a, a a star t25 in there it's kind of short I like the longer ones so I actually paid for two dollars to get a set of two long ones I have inch and five eighths two inch and then I mentioned the three inch ones for the gate all right, the two inch and the inch and five eighths I use interchangeably. You do need the inch and five eighths when you set the into um, the side of the two by four from your bracket because a two inch would go through it. So um, even though they say they're two inch, they're usually a little shorter than that. Um, and uh, and I think that covers it on how to build and and the advantages and the disadvantages of a good neighbor sl slash shadow box fence.
So I hope uh, this helps you, and I, if it does, give it a thumbs up, and uh, good luck on your project.